and most theologians agree that John wrote this to say, hey, those Gospels, they capture a lot. They're true, but there's some stuff that they're missing. So where they start off, if you look through them with, you know, the chronology, the chronolo- the birth of Jesus Christ and, and all those who preceded him, John starts, he starts his a little bit different. And in chapter 1, verse 1, this is what he says, in the beginning was the word. All right, so John takes this thing and says, there was this thing, we're just going to call it the word. The word he used was a, a Greek word meaning logos, which literally means what the entity or existence of a thing or a person. He says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. So whatever that word was, he's saying that word was with God in the beginning. And then he says, and that word was God. So he says, hey, in the beginning was this thing called the word. That word was with God in the very beginning, although in Genesis God says he was in the beginning. And then John says, hey, this thing that was with God in the beginning This thing, this word, was God. And then to avoid any confusion that anyone might have on who this word is or what this word is, he assigns that word a personal pronoun. He's no longer calling it the word. He says he, in referring to this word, was with God in the beginning. And then he says through him, this word, whoever he is, all things were made. Everything that was made, everything in the universe. And John is writing to both Jews and new Christians who were Gentiles. But he's using a lot of Jewish terminology because to the Jewish mindset, the the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, those were things that they started learning in the childhood where we're learning Dr. Seuss and then we start reading, you know, older books, what do they call them, reader books, they start learning Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy in the Jewish culture. So for them to hear in the beginning, their mindset would immediately go back to Genesis. We're talking about God. To hear that he created all things, their mind would immediately go back to Genesis. We're talking about God. And John says, yeah, that's this word that we're talking about. And he says, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. And again, the Jewish mind would have been like, hey, life came from God. He breathed life into Adam. And John is saying, yeah, that life came from the word. And John says, yeah, the Messiah was coming. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is God. God was coming. That's why this day is more important than any other day because it's not just the day when someone was coming. It's the day when God was coming. And the entirety of the book of Malachi, the burden that God had to get off his chest was, hey, hold on, I'm coming. I'm not going to send someone else. I want you to hold on. This is why that day is so important because God was telling his people, I'm coming, just hold on. And that's the message that God was bringing to his people. I know you're frustrated. I know you've got financial issues. I know you've got medical issues. I know you've got family members that are in the hospital or maybe they're not in a good place or maybe they're hooked on heroin or cocaine or meth or whatever, but just hold on. God is coming. God's gonna show up. And just like many of us are waiting for a new year, a new era, a new season, we wanna be done with 216. 2016. We want to just move into 2017 uh, in a better place, uh, knowing that, hey, things are going to be okay. The government's going to be okay. Our finances are going to be okay. Our jobs are going to be okay. Any new ventures we're trying are going to be okay. Our relationships are going to be okay. Our marriages are going to be okay. God is saying, just hold on. I'm coming. And the beautiful thing is, the entirety of the gospel of John is about God showing up. John chapter 20, verse 30 to 31. He says, there are many other signs, this is the Amplified Version, many other signs and miracles which Jesus performed in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these, meaning these signs and miracles and wonderful things that God performed, they are recorded in order that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, 
the Son of God, and that through believing and cleaving to and trusting and relying upon him, you may have life through and in his name, through who he is. He says, the only reason I'm writing this book, the only reason I recorded all these, the only reason I documented all these, the Gospel of Matthew, good stuff, go read it. Gospel of Mark, good stuff, go read it. The Apostle Peter uh, is the one who really helped kind of write it, although Mark scripted it, go read it. The Gospel of Luke, he's a doctor, he's a like archaeologist type guy, he went and researched everything, go read it. But John said, I am going to write this book so that you would know that God showed up and that you would trust in him and believe in him and have new life through him. 